judge and analyze the quality of produce. It is not hard at all. And all you need is a tool and you need a chart to check with. And so we have a chart which we're going to pass out. This is free. And uh, we have some tools which we are not going to pass out for free. Sorry, but these have to be purchased or you can find some on eBay. And I also have a source for a pretty good, a cheaper supply if you want to have that. I'll come to that later. But we are, um, we're looking at a measurement called bricks. And the, uh, the word is spelled B-R-I-X. Now the bricks reading then is a measure of the dis total dissolved solids that are in the juice, which is an indicator of how well it's grown and then we put that on as a number. So we take the juice, we squeeze out juice, and we can squeeze it from this, we can squeeze it from a lemon, whatever. We put a couple drops here, on here, we put it to a light, we focus the light, we focus the lens, and we read the number. Once we read the number, we compare it to the chart. Okay, now this will correspond with your sense of taste. You'll, the higher the reading, the sweeter the produce and also the more minerally nu nutrient dense it is. And what we're after is nutrient dense. The bricks and nutrient density are, are two words basically indicating the same thing, which is more minerals in the food. So the question is, what is bricks? It is a measurement of the bend when light passes through a liquid. So we, we calibrate with zero for distilled water. Distilled water is zero. And then we want to see how much dissolved minerals and how much sugars are in the liquid. So the more the quality of the, pru uh, the fruit or the vegetable, there will be more dissolved solids in the liquid. And that will bend. And so we're looking at the refraction of light as it bends. And chart it out based on a chart that uh, was developed by a, a man by the name of Dr. Reams and he developed this and said these are the standards for the BRICS reading for excellent, good, average, or poor. Uh, expect to be disappointed when you get to the grocery store. If you find it into the B grade or the good range you can rejoice over that because that's not so common. There is a USDA database that uh, lists all the typical nutrients in a, in a food. So you can go online, search that, find all the nutrients that would be in green beans or carrots or whatever. What we find in reality is that uh, a carrot, let's take a carrot, can vary from very, very minerally deficient all the way up to an outstanding food. And, and, and generally, the USDA database, they're probably about right here, saying the quality of a carrot right here, that's the average in the stores here. But what they don't tell you is what a carrot should have for nutrition. And, and that's kind of the new frontier, and I don't have the answer for what a carrot of optimum quality should have. But I do know it's far better than what the USDA is saying is the average in our stores today. My job is to help them get better quality produce so they can bring it to the market and have better produce. Now, some, uh, some key things that I look at as a consultant that will help and determine the quality of produce is the level of soil remineralization. Soil is derived from decomposed and broken down rocks. In those rocks are minerals. And of course, uh, it probably originally it comes out of volcanic source, but uh, we look at how much available minerals are in the soil. And that means the major ones like calcium and phosphorus and potassium, but also a lot of the trace minerals, including copper, iron, zinc, manganese, all these other trace minerals. That's one key to determine bricks is the level of soil remineralization. We also look at the correct ratio of available nutrients. So before a grower can get quality produce, he's got to have the minerals in the soil and he's got to have it in right ratio. When we get the soil in right ratio, we build an environment, an optimum environment for soil bacteria and the biology in the root zone of soil plants. Now this is very similar to building a birdhouse in the sense that you build the birdhouse and you put it up there. You do not really have to uh, 
call in the birds or, you know, you just put the birdhouse up and they'll start to come. In the same way, you create the right environment in the soil and the biology comes as well. And then the quality starts to come. The last thing that we do is we actually feed the plant. In addition to feeding it at the root zone, we actually feed the plant through the leaves called foliar feeding. So we actually, the plant will take nutrients through the leaves, including trace minerals. So that's another way. Each of us here has an important role to play. You're the consumer of this asparagus and of other fruit and vegetables that are here. And you know, it is your job to find out where the quality produce is at. You can compare with these tools. You can compare, does this grower have the better quality or is it this grower? And you can get the best level of minerals. And comparing on dollars, this one versus that one, is not asking the right question. I know we all have a budget, but when it comes to our health, buying nutrition in the form of food is minuscule compared to buying supplements. It's minuscule compared to buying drugs, very minuscule, and it's, it's nothing compared to going a day in the hospital. So what we wanna do is find the quality foods and eat the quality foods so we can avoid those latter things. So the consumer's job, is to seek out the right growers who have the best quality and get their produce. Now the farmer, his job is to produce the top quality. And if he doesn't produce the top quality, you should go to some other farmer. The job of the farmer is to get the nutrition into the soil and follow a program so that the, so the nutrition goes from the soil up into the plants. And that's the job of the farmer. And then he's got to bring that to market.